This is Sports 225 with Lee Feinswog. Sports 225 with Lee Feinswog is Baton Rouge's longest running and best television show. Who would have believed that? Sports 225 is brought to you by Breck. Remember, it all starts at Breck. Now, your host, Lee finds one. Oh my, it's Sports 225. It's the day after North Carolina beat Gonzaga for the National Basketball Championship. It's almost real spring and Ron Higgins is here. So hope must spring eternal. I can still hear the whistles in my ears from last night, last night's game. You know, I got a, a, a theory about the whole basketball thing. What, they pay, paid per whistle? <laughs> so why, with football they do this, okay? Team from the Big Ten is going to play a team from the Pac-12 in a bowl game. So they get an officiating crew from the SEC mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, neutral officials. And nothing could matter more than in basketball. The working together and the dynamics of teamwork. And they put three guys together who've never worked before, probably, or may have one time in their life randomly. Right. Like a lottery, maybe. Yeah. And, and I think sudden, yeah. the trust factor and reliability on your on your partner and knowing how they're going to react makes a big difference in how you call a basketball game. It's, it's pretty amazing they do it that way. Like this, the highest grade gets you there, you know? So you've never worked with these guys before, and all of a sudden you're – Let's have chemistry. Go. Chemistry on one. Yeah. And, you know, the week before the championship game, there are certain scenarios, or before the Final Four, okay, there was only X number of conferences involved. So you get officiating crews not from those conferences and have them in, in, in ready. Yeah. Well, three sets of them, you know. Best three from each conference. Best best. Officials from each conference, usually, and they all usually work together, but, but sometimes they right. work in teams. True, and they, you know, a lot of guys cross over, work different, yeah, different exactly. you know, multiple conferences. Yeah. You know, is that not a bad idea? No, it's, it makes too much sense, really. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what are you coming up with that stuff for? I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. It's logical. Ron Higgins writes for NOLA.com and the Times Picayune. He's been covering the SEC for yeah, f- over four decades now, haven't you? Yeah. Pretty close. If you count, if you count writing in high school. Yeah, if you count that, yeah. And you did. Yeah, if you count that. Yeah. Go back to the archives on Sports 225. Look up one of the old shows with Ron Higgins where he told the story about uh, learning, you know, getting into business in high school. Um, before the basketball season, do you remember what you thought and who you thought might win and what might happen? You know, basketball, in a sense, as someone like football, there's about a core group of five or six or seven teams you figure is going to be there at the end. Of course, Carolina, y'all are going to be. Gonzaga was a bit of a surprise. Uh, and I really wanted to see them win. I wanted to see the, the, the non big boy, even though they've been, they've been, I think it's like their 18th, 19th straight tournament. They've been there so many times. Uh, people don't consider them a, a mid major. But still, you know, when you don't recruit a bunch of All Americans, we, don't have, I mean, we don't have the high. Price budget, you kind of want to see that that team win. And but you know, generally with the Final Four, and I, you've been to so many of them like me, I can sit there on a Friday afternoon and watch teams practice and look at who has the physically biggest team and more and more uh, more big athletes than the other team. Generally, they win yep. most of the time. Yeah. And, and the, the last night it happened. Yeah, because what it is now is who's got the most athletic linebackers and tight ends. Mm-hmm. They foul. All five guys foul every play. Yeah. That's the way they play defense at the highest level. So the referees can't call them all, so they call too many as it is. And then how about the foreigner aspect? I Let me give you a, a weird little volleyball tidbit. I was ready for this one, and it didn't happen. But Killian Tilly from Gonzaga, mm-hmm. both his mom and dad um, are fabulous athletes. His brother, Kevin, who plays on the French Olympic team in volleyball. His father is the Olympic volleyball coach, and he won two NCAA championships at UC Irvine. Then he's got a sister who played college basketball and a brother who played college wow. basketball. And they're from France. I mean, real France, not like you know, guys who like fake citizenships to yeah. go play with the Olympic team. I was ready for that nugget. And then we've had like Andrew Gaze, for example, leading Seton Hall. Yeah, Australia. But, but, uh, 
never had a big Polish guy before that I can remember. No, not not yet. Not a no. I mean, uh, there, there was you know Frank Kosminski, right? Did I get yeah, the name right, yeah. right from, from Wisconsin. You know, Polish American. This is a Polish Polish. Yeah, I hadn't had that yet. No, you know, it'll it'll come one day. Poor baby, still waiting to put the ball in the in the, in the ring. He went one for eight. <laughs> couldn't put the ball in the ocean from the edge of the pier. It was tough. Yeah. If you ask him, did you lose the game for your team? They were talking about the big Gonzaga center, of course, and he would have to say yes. The lumberjack. <laughs> Paul Bunyan. He, he, he ought to have on the back P. Bunyan on his, on his jersey. That was his name. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's a burly fellow. <laughs> That's a good beard, though, you know. Yeah, oh, a yeah. major league beard, yeah. Mm, yeah. Not as white as this one. All right, he's Ron Higgins. We've uh, completely squandered this first segment with um, stellar analysis. Final Four stellar analysis. <laughs> I enjoyed the women's final four more. Mississippi State beating UConn. That, that was so, pretty fun. That was, was pretty fun, fun to watch. I forced myself to stay awake for that one. Um, when we get back, I don't know what we'll talk about, but we'll catch up. It's Sports 225. I'm Lee Feinswag. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Joe Martin, president of ITI Technical College. You know, you're not a number here at ITI. You're known by name. The staff and the instructors work diligently for your success because your success is our success. ITI is family owned and part of this community. Our 10 acre campus has been here for over 40 years. Let us evaluate your credits to determine if they'll transfer here. ITI is accredited by the Accrediting Commission of Career Schools and Colleges. ITI Technical College, begin your journey for a better life. We're back on Sports 225 and uh... You know, I felt very springy, you know, the Hawaiian. You did, you got the whole thing going on there. It's good. It's that time of year. A little, little warm for my taste so early, but, you know. Mr. Hawaii Fava. Ron Higgins is here. He's a sports writer for NOLA.com and at least once a month comes on the show. And I always enjoy visiting with him. Um, since I last saw you, I think we might have sat near each other, but we didn't get to talk much. Uh, LSU hired a new basketball coach in Will Wade. I have, I have shoes older than Will Wade. Me too. Um, <laughs> You realize that Will Wade wasn't born yet when Johnny Jones was a player for LSU in the Final Four. <laughs> it's true. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. You know they they you know, uh, Drew Levy could have gone old. He could have gone young. He went really young. Uh, I like his enthusiasm. I think he's uh, you know he says all the right things. He's you know did a nice job in both places. He's been his head coach. Uh, we'll see. And you know he's has to hire assistants. Did it. That'll, you know, and then in the karma of the, the sports gods just having a laugh, he hires the North Texas head coach who, who replaced place, Johnny Jones yeah, at Tony North Bedford. Texas. Yeah, Tony yeah. Yeah, Bedford. Yeah, Bedford. So he's a good recruiter in Texas, so that'll help. Now they're going to hire somebody who feels like he can recruit in Louisiana. But, uh, you know, I, I, you watch him, I've watched him coaching games. I like him. I like his uh, – he's into the games. I just – I'm a firm believer if your coach is not up into a game, you're not in, your team's not going to be into the game. Crowd's not going to be into the game. I, coaches who just kind of sit there the whole time, unless your team is really, really veteran, uh, no, nah, it just doesn't work. I thought, you know, I thought this guy understands that that you've, he's going to he, he's going to be into it. He wants his team to be in it, into it, and uh, I guarantee they'll play hard because if they don't play hard, they'll be sitting. Even if he's got to put scrubs in, they'll be sitting. Kind of like the, the old Dale Brown theory. Like you know, you're not playing hard. I'm going to sub the you know, five people in off the bench. But it might be any good, yeah. but I'm going to prove my point to you. Yeah, in his case, next year, he's, it, nobody expects him to win many games. No. So you might as well coach like that. Yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, so uh, this is the closest thing to probably, you know, Dale's first year at LSU ever, you know, just kind of taking a bunch of random guys and, you know, there's Dale did went 14 and 12, you know, uh, with a bunch of guys who dove on the floor and, uh, so we'll see what that happens. The team he I, called I, the Hustlers? The Hustlers, yeah. 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 So there are a couple of things from his news conference, um, but one of them that struck me as pretty funny was uh, that when he said, somebody asked him about assistant coach, and I never got the microphone to come back around to me because he said he wanted to find an assistant coach would be a good fit. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to tell him, you know, we've been told that fit is a joke. Yeah, really. <laughs> you know, with the guy who said that just off camera. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Not a good, not a good fit. <laughs> According to Joe Oliva, there's nothing, not, not a good fit. Right. Even AD may not be a good fit. It's possible. Uh, possible. Uh, I think Will Wade has a plan of who he wants to get his assistance. Whether he can get him or not, it's another another question. But I just, uh, they, you know, 
nobody in Baton Rouge wanted to see what happened to Johnny Jones, happened to him. And, but you knew it was coming. It, it, it was, the team was so incredibly bad, never got any better. Uh, you know, he'll land on his feet somewhere. He'll be fine. I just, but uh, you hate it for nice people, for stuff like that to happen to. But Johnny understands you don't win. This is what happens in this business. And you, they, you move on to the next guy. So they got the next guy, and we'll, you know, batter up. We'll see what happens. Just like, you know, I think this is the first time since 1920, something like that, 21, where LSU's had new football and basketball coaches in the same year. Wow. And back then it was the same guy. <laughs> yeah, same guy. Yeah. But he only, I think he only coached football one or two years because he couldn't beat Tulane. That'll got, teach you. That'll, that'll get him dumped. <laughs> yeah. So, but, uh, yeah. Well, to make you feel better about being an old guy, and I might have pointed this out to you last week on the show to John Brady, but you might be interested in this. Um, the last time we had a youngster in the Final Four was 2011-2012 when Brad Stevens took mm -hmm. Butler back-to-back -back years, and Shaka Smart was a really young guy taking VCU, mm -hmm. or you know, however, however that worked yeah. out with those years. Before that, you have to go back, and you think back to uh, Billy Donovan in 2006, and you think, like, there's a really young coach. He was 40-something. Yeah. Then you got to go all the way back to 1987 when a 33- or 34-year-old Rick Patino, with Billy Donovan as a shooting guard, yeah. took Providence to the Final Four in New Orleans. Yeah. This is an old guy's club who gets to the Final Four. Um, and, I, and I may get the years slightly off, but, but Dana Altman from, from Oregon is 56, and yeah. Mark Few is 52, or vice versa. And, um, of course, and Frank Martin's 51 mm -hmm. from South Carolina. And the winning coach, Roy Williams, is 66. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, you know, and, and Will Wade's 34. That doesn't mean he can't win at 34. No. He's just, not going to win at 34. He's not going to win at 35. But he might win at 36 or 37. Yeah. I mean, I mean it took, uh, I think Billy Donovan was hired when he was 30, 30, maybe. Maybe 30. He was pretty young. And in and, 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 and his fourth year, he was in the final four. Uh, lost to Mateen Cleaves and Michigan State in the finals. But... Uh, it's not to say it can be done with, with a young guy, but you have to have a little experience. You get into yeah, a because league. yeah, Florida when Florida eventually um, we went back to back, right? Like 06 yeah. and 07. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he'd been there a long time. Yeah, been yeah. there yeah, a long time. Yeah, you know, so it, it takes a while. But but uh, you know, if if you continue to improve and show improvement, that's that's and you know, you, you, you every year you get a little bit better. Every year you, you get in the tournament, and go a little bit deeper. I mean, if it shows you keep showing improvement, you're going to hang around. I mean, that's. That's how you build a program. That's how you get better recruits every year. They see what you're doing is good, and the crowd show up, and the program builds. I mean, yeah. I was, I was already, and we're already at the end of this segment, and you finished the last segment with it, and I wanted to jump on it, and I, just, and I forgot. I just remembered Mississippi State going to the women's Final Four, Mississippi State, and then beating UConn. You know? it, that was like, you know, that's why you love sports. Yeah. You love sports because here's a, here's a group of kids, none of them, the, highly recruited, you're playing, you know, the, the Death Star program of women's basketball uh, and uh, slugging out toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, even got a bad call and, and over, you know, uh, overcame that at the end, uh, the flavor and foul that they call it, which was ridiculous, overcame that and a little, little player on the court hit a shot. But to me, the most interesting thing with the whole thing was as the ball went in, it showed Jim, Jim Calhoun smiling. No, Gino Oriema. You know, sorry, Jim, 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 yeah, Jim, hey, Jim sorry. Calhoon coached the men a couple of yeah, times. Yes, yeah, Gino Oriema smiling. And it was almost like, one, he was relieved, like, you know, like, and also he was happy. And I think people, when you see Gino most of the time, you, you think he's an absolute jerk, and, and he probably, he comes off that way. But the way he handled that post game and was as good as I've ever seen a coach handle it as far as just, being gracious and giving uh, Mississippi State credit, and and you know, and just you know, just you know, saying that we've been in that position many times, you know, uh, losing, you know, where you know we got, our, you know, the teams have got their dreams crushed by us a lot of times. Now, you know, we get to feel what it is like, and you know, you know, it's not a great feeling, but you know, we'll remember it. He was really good, and I think that surprised a lot of people. I'm not surprised me. He might have been, you know, he might even think himself, you know, th this is good for the game, but. But not at his expense. Anyway, we're, we're way over. But um, if you haven't seen him talking about body language, the players he recruits, and the way he expects them to act, do a search on YouTube. Do Gino, Gino Oriema body language. Watch it. Trust me, if you're a, a, a parent of an athlete, if you're a coach, if you just like sports in general, it's good stuff. He's Ron Higgins. I'm Lee Fine, so I'll get Sports 225, and we'll be right back.
Don't let the bed bugs bite you. We'll put them to sleep. Bed bugs can be transported from most anywhere. Hotels, department stores, even a friend's house. We've got the bead on bed bugs. Call the bug man today. Call 923 Bugs. Um, I have no idea what I'm talking about. We're back on Sports 225. It's spring. I feel springy, and it's spring football time of year, which is, I guess, you know, remember the old days I used to say in the SEC there were two sports, you know, football and spring football. No, Luckily, it, that's not the case anymore. No, but there are just recruiting. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, three sports. And a rest but, season. Yeah. Um, and there are places where spring football seems to matter a great deal, where more thousands of people come out on a Saturday to watch their team in the spring, which blows my mind. Yeah. Um, but uh, LSU has spring football, um, and it's, it's pretty relevant, I think, this year because of having an implanted, finally, head coach, um, a new coordinator, still no quarterback, um, with all due respect to young Danny Etling. I'm, I still need to be convinced, and other things. Well, I just think that the, the biggest interest is in the offense and the stuff they're putting in, and you can talk to all the offensive players, and they're just – fired up by this offense the, the first two scrimmages kind of dazzled the defense because I mean, he uses a lot of shifts a lot of motion and he, he, you know he doesn't it's not an overload of plays but he runs them out of so many different looks that it looks like a bunch of different plays and that's the beauty of his offense and uh, talk about Matt Canada the new Matt offensive Canada, coordinator new, uh, and, and that's the the players have loved it so far they, they really like it I mean from you know Darius guys you know Talking about you know they uh, you know I get they, they get me in space more. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel sorry for linebackers next year, which he, what he actually said, being Darius guys. Uh, you know uh, just the the re receivers. Uh, you know Chark, who's really good on 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 reverses and in sweeps and then jet sweeps. He'll be he'll have the ball a lot. It's just uh, it's just that you know I listened to Canada. He was the LSU coaching clinic. He talked about his offense to a bunch of coaches. He said you know it's. He goes, I want my offense to be offensive. I want to attack. I don't want to have this guy, defense, to have to sit there and allow, allow him to sit there and just know what's coming. And I'm, I'm, and I'm sure LSU fans heard that like, hallelujah, we're free, you know. <laughs> and and uh, so it'll, it'll be uh, – how much he'll show in the spring game, it'll be interesting. They never show anything, really. But he's going to have to show something just to keep fans, you know, like, like uh, yeah. so there's actual change. Well, if you're an LSU football and basketball fan, so that you've heard what he just said about – the LSU offense, and then you heard what Will Wade said, you know, this is going to be an in-your-face pressing mm -hmm. defense and a get-after-it offense. So there's a kind of mentality that I think as a sports fan, you watch teams that you like. So you've been doing this forever. You've been to countless spring football, okay? You've mm -hmm. been to spring football at one time or another, probably to almost every SEC team, yeah. like visiting and watching and yeah. whatever. In your memory, a spring football that was extremely impactful, where you thought, this is really something. I'm glad to have it. Because, see, I'm of the opinion that it – should be totally non-contact and limited to like three days. But I'm kind of like you. I mean, Cause those I, kids, those kids with the demands on them for six months as it is, is so, so strong. Yeah. And I mean, they, they, they I think they, they probably practice three times a week in spring now yeah. and they, they've cut it down quite a bit. And I don't know how much they actually hit unless they're scrimmages. I think a lot of thud stuff, I think they've cut down quite a bit uh, of, of, yeah. the, of the contact, you know, and what, like what you said, nobody wants anybody to get hurt in spring. That's the last place you want to get hurt. Yeah. yeah. But have you ever been to one where you, you know, can you remember over the years where you said, this is a great spring and I've learned so much from this and this team is so much better because of it? Peyton Manning's first spring at Tennessee. Yeah. It, he took over as a starter. Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, wow. You know, just, I mean, this, this, it's like watching a pro, you know, just like getting up the line, just calling stuff, like this. You know, moving people all over the place, boom, 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 boom. I'm like, holy moly. You know, as a freshman, he was good. Right. And he didn't start. He started alternating with a guy. And he, he had a really good game in, in, the, uh, in the Gator Bowl, the only Gator Bowl ever played in, in Gainesville, Florida, by the way. People say Peyton and Benny never won in, in Florida. He won a Gator Bowl there. Why was it there? Was because that the year they were renovating the stadium? Uh-huh, they were renovating the stadium. Yeah. So, yes, he actually won in Gainesville <laughs> once. Uh, <laughs> But you could see that that spring as a, as a sophomore, wow, this, this, is gonna be, this is unbelievable. This is going to be really, really good. That kind of opened my eyes. But other, other than that, most springs were pretty mundane. You know, you, you might get a new coordinator come in, install a new system defensively that, like, blitzes more or whatever. But you can, with, with Matt Canada, you can visibly see there's more energy. And he's into, you know, he's a good teacher. He's into everybody. 
And also their running backs coach from USC, he's a, he's a piece of work too. He really is. I mean, he's loud too. So Ed's not the only, only loud one now out there. They got some loud coaches, but, but they teach really well. And I'm looking forward to the offense because the, the players are, are really enthused about it. They, they really, they, unlike last year where they threw the ball a lot this spring, people thought there would be a change, but there wasn't. They know there's going to be a change this year. Well, even with uh, Leonard Fournette being as good as he was, but you know, as Les Miles might have said, he was nicked up a lot. Um, they actually could have more explosive running attack next year because Darius Geis is that good, that 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 rangy. Darius Dar Geis is that good, and also you, you look at some of his backups. Darrell Williams has lost some weight, and Darrell Williams has always been a pretty good power back. Kind of kind of got lost in his shuffle, mm -hmm. and he's lost some weight, and and he'll he'll I mean, he'll be. He'll, the NFL will go after him, too, because he'll be a good backup next year. But, yeah, Geis is explosive. Geis does some things Leonard can't do. I mean, Leonard couldn't jump sideways like Geis. I mean, Geis, you know, would just, you know, Leonard would run over you and kind of run over you and, and churn. Geis would hit you, and he's like a, uh, like a little tornado, you know. Like, uh, or, or as you know, J.D. Moore called him, a Tasmanian devil, uh, you know, like from the cartoons, which is a pretty good description. And uh, guys could have a huge year. He, he, you know, Granny stays healthy. I mean, and you know, let's don't you know begin making them in the scrimmage. But yeah. All right, I gotta call you for time so we can finish the uh, finish the show. Yep. Get you out of here. He's Ron Higgins. Read his stuff at nola.com. Follow him on Twitter at Ron Hig with two G's. And uh, Guga. Huh? Higga. Higga. <laughs> I'm Lee Feinswag. It's Sports Two Two Five. <laughs>See that dog lover about to unleash the terror hound on these friendly unsuspecting canines well i'm the human dislike button and i see it too easy there cujo taking part in a dog socialization program at a shelter or pet store can help nip this problem in the butt and no matter how well socialized your pet is cleaning up the little rays of sunshine they leave in their merry wake is your responsibility to learn more about me go to breck.org hdb all right, we're back on Sports 225, coming down the home stretch, and it's very short because we rambled on about a bunch of stuff. Uh, thanks to John Williams from JCW for directing today. Go to sports225.com for all the show listings on Cox 4 CST and to watch archive shows at Sports 225 TV, um, our YouTube channel. Um, man, once spring football is over, of course, you got LSU baseball, and then what's, what what you going to do for that little bit of time you have before football kicks in in July? Golly, when you do, baseball will stretch on, you know, to like early June. Yeah. So that takes a lot of time up there. So I mean, it's there's not much time between June and July when, when football starts. You got another cruise coming? You and Paige love your cruises. I got another cruise coming like next 30 days. Oh, nice. <laughs> but but uh, we try to fit everything in. But yeah, I mean, it'll be here. Football be here before you know it. I mean, most in, in off season I try to track player arrest. You know, <laughs> my my golden handcuffs award. See who wins an SEC wins it. Right now, uh, it hasn't the first quarter? It's not over yet. Alabama's in the lead. Uh, well, now that Mark Rick has left uh, Georgia and Urban Meyer's not at Florida, those two teams have fallen off a little bit. Yeah, but, but Florida won <laughs> last year. It. I know. Stop it. Stop it. They're pretty He's good. Ron Higgins. Read his stuff at NOLA.com. Um, check out VolleyballMag.com for my stuff and Sports225.com for everything else. Uh, this has been Sports225. <laughs> Golden handcuffs. Golden handcuffs. <laughs> yeah, Georgia, Georgia, I think Georgia may have won last year. Florida year before. They, we had two straight years of new coaches coming in the league. And their team's winning. At Carnival Time by Baton Rouge Bay, that's the site of my story. At Spanish Town Mardi Gras, things can get blurry. See the moors marching, prizes fill the sky. This Spanish Town Mardi Gras. May it never die.